The Shack Out Back Parapod Movie Podcast episode is an entertainment podcast. It's strongly advised you not take anything we say seriously. Neither the Parapod, Shack Out Back, or Jim specifically are liable for any misfortune brought about by listening to this crap. Welcome everybody to Shack Out, Shack Out Back. Back. Episode 30. Is it 30? We, is it 29? Think, it's one of them. 29 I think or 30. I think it's 29. My bet's on 30. 30 sounds right. 30 is a good round number. Uh, yeah. It's me, Jim, at Popeye Barkin, and the other one is... It's me, Danny. Changed his Twitter by description today to make it look more professional. Uh, I think I'm at Markle Danny. A very doxable Markle Danny. Don't guess my last name. Today, we're talking about Jim's favorite. It's Jim episode... Yeah, We're this is gonna about... be a this is gonna be a this is gonna be a Lisa heavy episode. Everyone, turn the TV <laughs> off. It's not a like Jim a good, heavy episode. Not a good old Millhouse episode like everyone <laughs> expects. Uh, no, this is Jim, and he picked uh, Shacko back or not Shacko back. Parapod. We uh, we I made Dan watch the Parapod movie. Dan and Cassie, and Cassie got upset watching the Parapod movie. Uh, but uh, yeah, we're gonna be talking yes, about the Parapod today. I'll talk about the podcast and Ian Boldsworth and Barry Dodds a bit. But, yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. We're going to talk moaning about the Parapod film, which they released last year, but really it's gotten a wide kind of it spread this year. It feels like this year. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, as we always start, Dan stole from some unwilling person that stole their Somewhere. idea. It's, it's the bi-weekly breakdown. Do you want me to go first? Or do you want to go first, Dan? Uh, Jim, I'll let my good friend go first. You tell me what you've done. Give me the give me the heads up. Give me the 411. Me Gombus. Me Gombus go first. Yes. Uh, I did. I watched and did a lot of shit the last couple of weeks. I tell you what. Uh, first things first. I bought uh, Dark Souls for the Switch. Yes, Mo, for the love of Christ, you keep saying it every other fucking day. You keep saying I bought Dark Souls for the Switch. I love me some Dark Souls. I'm a Dark Souls man, and it says Dark Souls Remaster on the, on the tin, on the tin, on the box. But the they tin. used the regular version of Dark Souls to port it to the Switch. They just like upgraded the FPS in a little bit and made it run a little smoother. And my God, they made the right decision. Holy fuck, it's so nice to just play regular Dark Souls on the toilet. Does it actually run half decent? Yeah, it runs at stable thirty. Like Blight Town doesn't That's have good. any dips or anything. It looks really good. I think there's like, I think in really heavy areas they do like. To, like texture stuff that I, but it's yeah. not noticeable because i only have a handheld switch which is fine but yeah i did that i watched midnight mass you watched midnight that oh yeah you yeah. hadn't seen it before huh? it was fucking amazing i think that director whatever his name is the guy who directed hush and this and uh uh dr sleep i think it's mike yeah. flanagan i think his name is i think he's the best director working right now he's so fucking good and midnight mass made me cry made me feel stuff midnight his catholic mass was boy very was very good, good. Yeah, i found myself thinking about it quite a lot after me too i watched parasite with Jaden, and uh it was pretty good i like i don't know if oh, think yeah, it was we watched parasite too i don't think it was my favorite movie from that year i can't think of a movie right now but it's probably not my favorite but i enjoyed it very much i didn't think i didn't think it was as good as snowpiercer or the host i didn't like it as much but it oh, was he, definitely he wrote very the host fun. as well yeah he directed that oh, too interesting i didn't know that i, I knew uh snowpiercer interesting i also watched I rewatched paprika and paprika is still really good it's better than fucking Inception. I don't like that. I watched Howl's Moving Castle for the first time. That was extremely good. Have you seen that one? I have not. I have it, and I am surprised I haven't seen it, but I just haven't got around to it. Fucking extremely good. Maybe we will this weekend. I also watched Brawl in Cell Block 99. Did I tell you about Brawl in Cell Block 99, Dan? Didn't you say it was disgusting or something? It had yeah. like grotesque amounts of violence. It had. It was the same director who did uh, Bone Tomahawk, and he wrote a couple yeah. of books I read, Wraiths of a Broken Land and A Congregation of Jackals. His name is S. Craig Zoller, yes. and he's a very good writer-director. He, he does very good character work, but his movies always have, like, shocking violence in them. <laughs> and I will say that this the Brawl in Subbuck 99 is about Vince Vaughn, and he goes to jail, and some bad stuff happens to him. And there's a point where he gets in a fight, and he punches a guy till he falls on the ground. And then, to intimidate the other guys, he stomps his head into the ground, and then scrapes his head across the ground until his face rips off. So, so Jim, when does the gratuitous violence start? Uh, about then I, it, it okay. wasn't manageable until like the last 10 minutes when it got like he busted a guy's jaw out and stuff it was pretty grotesque but it was, they were it was pretty good shark fin soup and grinding up babies <laughs> into cornmeal and stuff. this ain't cannibal holocaust ain't that bad <laughs> uh i also watched pig 
with Nicolas Cage. Jim, you watched a lot of good movies. I did. I watched a lot of shit. That's not all I've watched either, but I watched Pig and Pig made me cry. Pig was fucking excellent. Pig is the Nick Cage movie. Yeah, where he has a pig, a truffle pig. And uh, he's like, yeah, I'm not going to spoil any of it. You should just watch it because it's like, I I really do think that Nicolas Cage is a really good actor when he gives Where did you watch it? I bought it on Blu-ray. Oh, it's already out to buy. I didn't yeah. know how new it was. It came out this year. Yeah. <laughs> I like I think it's came out like a few months ago on like home media release Did and stuff. Did it have but a theater release? Were theaters open at that time? Probably. I think it came out like the middle of this year to okay. like May region, I think. But no, it was really good. Yeah, it was it was amazing. It made me cry. It was really, really good. Hmm. I wonder how much money Nick Cage is owing to the IRS lately. Probably less. He's in a lot of movies, but like that movie <laughs> and uh Joe I really liked and Mandy. And shit, Never like Nick- Joe. I watched Mandy. Didn't we see Mandy together? Yeah, we saw it in the theater. Like he, he, when he gets the right material, he's excellent. Like that man has an Oscar. Do you know Nicolas Cage has an Oscar? Really? Yeah. Who else has Oscars? Who's the one everyone always wants to have an Oscar? Is that Leonardo DiCaprio? Yeah, and he got it because he screamed and cried and ate raw fish in uh, nice. Revenant. That's what they asked for. Yeah, and I'm gonna end this off with I finished reading Comanche Moon, and I think that was the last book in the in lonesome dove quadrilogy or whatever the hell the four books it was like the second chronologically was the last book that was released and it was excellent it was really good it was so good in fact buffalo hump yeah buffalo hump dies in that one it was very sad buffalo hump was a real guy and in real life this is gonna be spoilers for comanche moon spoilers for buffalo hump biography buffalo hump like just took like the comanches and they went on a reserve and he died like alone in like the 1860s but in like comanche moon he like goes off by himself that he hasn't gone the, the tribe hasn't gone to the reservation yet and his son blue duck comes and they fight and he fucking stabs him through the hump and he kills him it's really he good. has a he has an actual hump yeah that's why they call him buffalo hump oh it makes perfect sense why didn't i think about that the book's really good and i it, it's so good that i tried reading hondo which is supposed to be like a really good cowboy book and it fucking sucked my dick like it was <laughs> extremely bad like i read the first like 40 pages and i was like this sucks he's literally like i dude kills some natives and then he like goes to a farm and then the woman falls in love with him and starts talking about her womanly needs i'm like i fucking hate this so i just stopped reading it and bought another book by the same guy who wrote lonesome dove fucking that was sucked. jim's cowboy corner this week yes it was but I'll, I'll be back with more cowboy stuff next week because i bought another cowboy book so what do you think about cowboy curtis who is cowboy curtis i don't know who that is cowboy curtis is from peewee's playhouse he's samuel jackson's character that's amazing. There's a there's Samuel Jackson's in Pee Wee's Playhouse. I didn't know that. I swear to God, it's Samuel Jackson. I hope I'm not racist. Give me one millisecond to look. Let's it see up. if Dan's racist. I'll leave all this in. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. I'm looking it up. Yeah, no cow. Samuel Jackson was uh, Pee Wee Her- or Pee Wee Herman's cowboy Curtis. He wore a big pink shirt and he had the tassel thing that he had and he wore big leather gloves with stars on them the jury's in dan is not racist this week everybody so said, you thank can, christ you can you cannot put down your calendar the times dan is racist down to zero it can still count up we're good actually yeah episode isn't over yet but we're safe for now so we're gonna turn over to dan dan what have you been doing the last two weeks what have i been doing the last two weeks I've been hanging out. I've been working quite a fair bit. You've been working. You've been pushing around. You've been pushing around people, pushing around nice, nice old people. I've been hearing. Yeah, I've been cut all that because I don't want people to know my job. But yeah, I've been working a little Shut bit. Shut up! I don't, li- people I don't can like know your job. <laughs> I don't like talking about my job because I don't like it. Okay, my job is being a storage mark guy. I will sell you a storage units that people have not died in. <laughs> um, I started watching. Uh, ba, 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 ba. He-Man Masters of... It's a fucking huge title. He-Man Masters of the Universe Re- Revelation Part 2. <laughs> Did it already come out? How is it? It's good. I'm liking it so far. It's really different. It's really, really different so far. Are the man babies screaming on YouTube about it? I haven't looked, but I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure they are. Because, yeah... Uh, maybe I'll look at that after. Because I am interested. I didn't really think about it, but I'm sure they're freaking out and screaming online. Uh, I finished my playthrough of Dishonored again. I did a high chaos, very hard playthrough of Dishonored, and I That's enjoyed awesome. it quite a lot. I've only ever played that game, like, not killing anybody. Yeah, so I think I've done them all now. I haven't done complete ghost playthrough where you don't get seen ever by any enemy throughout the entire game. Yeah, but that would just be fucking tedious. Yeah, I've heard it's just a lot of saves coming, so I'm not really interested to do that. I've done the low chaos things where I kill no one. Like, I've done that. 
But uh, I did that, and it made me really want to play through Dishonored 2 again, because I think I gave that game a bad rep just because I was burned by it when it came out, because it did not work on PC for, like, yeah. a long while. Like, it was A few fucked. months, right? Yeah, and I pre-ordered it. So I, I think I'm bitter because of that, but I think if I go back and play it, I'll really enjoy it. Um, it's also made me want to play Dishonored Death of the Outsider, which was, like, the DLC standalone game again, because I I've really like that. I've heard that's better than Dishonored I liked 2. it. I remember liking it a lot. It was really interesting. had a lot of cool yeah. ideas. And then Steam sale started, so my oh, friend yeah. Jim here got me Hrot. Yeah, we got each other Christmas gifts. I yeah. got Dan Hrot. I got him the the recipe for beef stroganoff, which is the credits <laughs> of Hrot. Uh, and I got Jim the Dread X Collection 2 and Dread X The Hunt, because so, I love Dread X The Hunt. When Dan comes over, I can hook my gaming PC up to a big TV, and we can play Squirrel Stapler together, where we can staple squirrels and go hunting and see God. It'll be That's very good. fucking horrible. That's in the second one? Yeah. Maybe I'll have to get it, because I, I always see David Szymanski talking about it, but I don't know what it is, really. It's, it's very memed on Twitter, which it should be, because Squirrel Stapler is, like, at one time horrible, and one time, like, very out there and funny that one he made it. One time genius. It's his, it's his magnum opus, you may say. It's much better than Monkey Aladdin, I'll say. That's the book he wrote? Yeah, it's fucking horrific. <laughs> Yikes. Uh, what else have I been really doing? Yeah, me and Cass watched Parasite. I pro- I think I enjoyed it more than you. I liked it a lot. Like, I was glued to the screen the whole time. Yeah, I wasn't as engrossed as I was in his other movies. Yeah. No. What else? Me and Cass watched the Boku no Hero second movie. I wanted to go to the theaters to see the third movie, but I was too late on the draw, so I missed it coming to theaters, so I'll have to buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out. Other than that, we put up the Christmas tree. We're getting in the mood. I finished yeah, your Christmas shopping really cool. for her, so we're all good. Already. You already got Castle or shit. I I just bought um, you stuff good. on steam it was great that yes you bought me h rot 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 other than that it's just been kind of chilling playing deep rock playing video games i had a deep rock crash this morning so i've been itching and scratching all anxious to play deep Dan, rock again. before we started recording dan was like jim i wonder if i think my pc is just dying i think it's just <laughs> dying. that's it deep rock crashed this morning and i was nervous all day that it was something but in my mind i'm like obviously it wasn't because it hasn't crashed ever and there was an update that got forced immediately when i was playing so i'm sure that has to do something with it but still nervous all right are you ready to talk about the topic at hand for episode 29 or 30 of shack out back one of those two i think you are right i think it's 29 but yes let's let's talk about it jim introduce introduce what you're talking because when you said this last week i said i have no fucking clue what you're talking about so so i, lo- I love a man the artist formerly known as ray peacock it's uh, ian boldsworth so i tried listening the first time on the ray peacock podcast and okay. then i had to uh it just sucked and then uh he did another podcast called peacock and gamble it was the first okay. thing i listened to where it was just like him and a young comedian talking and i remember i had never listened to anything of his stuff before i was just trying to find a comedy podcast and they were had it it's like this conversational thing and they made a joke about spit roasting a sick leukemia child okay uh, and when I was standing in the middle of like my university and I just started like with all these people around me, it was the middle of November. I started howling oh, with fucking laughter, yeah, I've doubled that. over, just screaming and screaming. It was so fucking funny. I couldn't take it. But yeah, this is a guy who's done like stand up forever. Like he, uh, he's a big in like rugby, like in the UK. And like, uh, he did, he did like a radio show. He's done like a bunch of different shit. But a few years ago when I was at university, he made this podcast with another comedian because he was just talking to him about weird stuff uh, called Barry Dodds it's called the Parapod. And, uh, it's about ghosts, it's about ghouls. Do you know anything about the Parapod, Dan? Jim, do you think I know anything about the Parapod? <laughs> anything at all? Yeah. I kind of just thrust Dan into this, but, uh, it was like this podcast where Ian Boltsworth is kind of like a guy who like doesn't believe in anything. He's a very like logical person. He approaches everything scientifically and trying to like find the truth in things. And Barry Dodds is like not that. He's very like fly by your seat of your pants, like believe in anything kind of man. So the podcast was like Barry would come to them with like a topic. It was like a haunting or something. And then he would come up with ridiculous things like he did in the film like we've seen. And Ray would just tear him down. And the first season is about like ghosts. The second season is about like uh conspiracies and the third season about like uh cryptids and myths and stuff like bigfoot and the chupacabra and stuff like that yeah. but yeah after that they made a movie which i had not seen i just made day i thrust dan into it so what did you think about just being thrust into the middle of this film dan okay first so so they are they're like friends obviously outside of this yeah okay and e, so are they both comedians or is it just yeah Okay, so they're both comedians. Have you been listening to these guys for a long time? 
like I think the Parapod came out like six years ago. So like a long enough time because I, yeah. I didn't I knew nothing about it. And then when you started talking about it, I was like, Jim, is this over? Is it going on for a million years? Like, is the Parapod the biggest thing that they're that Ian's known for? Or yeah, you I'd said he has so. a stand up comedy. Yeah, like he has a stand up comedy career that he used to have, but okay. I don't know. I, I don't live in the UK. Like he used to work a lot of different places. I know. Yeah, yeah. But like, um, he's been on like the what's that big comedian who has a show? The guy with the long hair, he, the Russell Brandt show. He Eric was like Tom? on different. He was on the Russell Brandt show and like different things like that. Like he's like a known comedian there. Okay. But this this okay, is like so the thing. He's, yeah. yeah. There's a thing he's known like internationally, and I say this is the biggest thing he's ever been in. Okay. And then Barry Dodds, do you know much about him? Nothing. I've never Nothing. seen oh, Barry really? do like stand up or anything. Like I've not watched videos of Barry. Yes, I've listened to him a little bit, like record his thoughts and stuff. When he like he's a funny guy. Like I don't think that comes across in the movie as much, but like he was like I remember they were having a conversation one time during the parapod, and they were like, Well, what do we do? Uh make people laugh. Like, how do we do that? And Barry just dead ass just turns to him and says, God, I wish I knew how to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> media just made me so laugh. It's, a lot. They they both seem like quite charismatic people, anyways. Yeah. And uh yeah, so I knew nothing about this. I I could obviously guess I'm not I'm not an idiot. I could guess what it was gonna be about. Parapod. I didn't I kept on saying the parapods because I thought that's what they were called, but no, it the just dank means pods. Yeah, I think that's why. But it's just par- paranormal podcast essentially. Yeah. Basically. Yeah, so how many how many episodes of there? So there's 10 episodes there's three of season seasons. 1. Yeah. Okay. So they would do like they would do like a batch record where they do like 10 weeks and then they take like a few months off and then another okay. 10 weeks and take a few months off. It was like that. But okay. they haven't they haven't put out like a proper season of the Parapod in like it's like over three years. Yeah, I'd say it's over. Yeah. But they're just like they put all their attention in this film, and now they're yeah. just kind of like they do other podcasts together that's released exclusively on Patreon. They might have released them other places. That's where I listen to them. But the Parapod's like done after this, I think, unless they bring okay. it back for whatever reason. Yeah, I can see that. The movie follows the, and I was kind of interested because I didn't know what the movie was going to be about. Neither did it's I. It's kind of an odd like, premise to me. It's it's yeah. making a movie about a podcast basically yeah i think that it's i think it it was a complicated thing to kind of like turn into a film because the movie kind of starts with them sitting down in a recording studio which is very podcast like yes yeah they they intersperse it with like it's very hard thing to like pitch someone yes i think that's why they did it independently because it's very like in the last episode of the parapod like season one they went to that house they went to and spent the night and talked to that lady in the chair and did all that shit so they basically did that like a few times and put it into like a film like they went to a few different like creepy places and put them in yes. like a film what house was that you you mentioned it a couple times uh i'm trying to remember off the top of my head 30 east drive in pontifract i think that's it was, what it was yeah it pontifract yeah, yeah that's the name you kept saying yeah pontifract sounds like a dark souls character it was, it was very fun to go through this film with you and cassie and you and cassie just like repeat like edinburgh pontifract and a bunch of different places like that it was fun. it's because the uk is a laughing stock of um, <laughs> some, some parts of the world it's funny to say i'm going to where'd they drive through where'd barry drive them through in the taxi i was like buckley Helen, or something buckley or, buckley or something, buckley something like or something. that <laughs> that's where english came from bro that's like the roots of our language yeah, and I can laugh at them all I want because they say <laughs> things funny. I was going to say, I liked when they, when his name is Ian, right? Yeah. Ian's the one who doesn't believe in ghosts. Yeah. When Ian introduces Barry to the car and and he, you can very clearly tell it's not staged because Barry's like fucking holding in his anger. He's looking at it just <laughs> in amazement. And they act, they ask some random passerby, does this look good? And she's like, uh, yeah, where are you from? Sheffield? And he's like, oh, they're goddamn tourists. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that this movie was kind of, like, reliant on, like, Barry especially. Because the way he reacts to certain situations, like, being locked in the house and, like, that thing that, like, they're in a crypt and he thought he saw something. Like, he hallucinated oh, something. Oh, my God. And he don't fucking get me started. Like, freaked the fuck out and started crying like the watcher jim it was the watcher he like there's no way you could script shit like that and some of the things he says in the parapod too were so funny like he was like he, one day let me tell you one day there was an episode of the parapod where he was talking to ian and uh he came with a, like a math problem he was like i give you 97 cents and you give me three back 
and like whatever the heck. And it was literally just a math problem. He came he came to the pear pot with a math problem because he didn't know where like the penny went. Like he didn't know like where the penny went and the change he made. It was like shit like that. What like, the fuck? It was always keeping you guessing what the fuck Barry was talking about. It was so fucking funny. Uh, but that was like true. That's that's the that's how you get the parapod. Is like he literally like he he bought a car for the film, and I don't know like if he had to drive it around or something during the like during filming and stuff. I mean, had to it be seems car. like it. <laughs> yeah, he just rolled up in a fucking hearse that had parapod like spray painted on the side, cool. and a little like uh little like fucking like license plate cover with their faces on it. <laughs> It looked badass. I liked it. It's fucking hilarious. I do not want to know how much something like that costs, and I don't want to know how you get a hearse insured, because I feel like it's probably different rules. Well, the guy who owns the house in in the movie, the one that the ladies were in that they spent the night in or whatever, that Barry Oh, Jim, in. okay. I'm sure those women are, or at least that, the other two women were kind of... about that yeah. part? <laughs> I'll talk about, that was in, that was in Pontefract. Yeah. Yeah uh so those two women well there was three women but i'm gonna only talk about one they were catatonic they were catatonic they were cardboard cutouts they couldn't have been there the one lady was wearing a coat that was like triple xl on her frame and she was just sinking into the chair dissolving <laughs> as carol was screaming at, at ian so about, you said like... you said that ian and her are civil when they talk about other things are, yeah did you not yes i did Okay, maybe I'm just this type of guy, but how do you become civil with someone when she's screaming in my face that there's a phantom over her shoulder <laughs> telling you that you are not correct? <laughs> like, I Ian love... has a lot more patience in this matter than me, and he's very articulate, which is good. Yes, he's a very articulate man. I feel like he had to have a lot of patience in order to record oh with Barry and trying God. to get this stuff together. Because I feel like we were watching the film a lot, and, you know, like... Ian was, like, grabbing Barry's ass when they were walking around, like, a crypt and stuff like that, and, like, goofing around, and, and Cass was like, oh, he tra- he, 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 she should treat him better or something, he's bullying him. <laughs> I, re- I really don't think that he does. Like, I think, he, like, he knows the point to stop, right? Like, there was a point where, like, Barry was in that crypt, and he thought he saw something, and he was, like, crying and crying, and he was, like, holding on to, to yeah, Ian and, yeah. like, hold, trying to hold his hand stuff and getting out of there. And it's, and it's like, he knew to stop then. Like, he knew to stop, like, fucking around and, and playing tricks on him because he knew that, like, that enough was enough, right? Like, he knew, like, to pick on him a bit to get, like, uh, to have, like, a laugh or do something. But, like, when he, someone's actually in distress, he knows to, like, not to cut it out, right? And I think, like, that's part some of the best thing you can do in comedy is no one to, like not press a button that doesn't need to be pressed like the ticket over the line i think he's a very professional dude yeah i would say like i kept saying it and i really do believe it they have a lot of i I don't know if they'd even know who this is because i think it was a canadian thing but kenny versus spenny like i don't think you'd know who kenny versus spenny is unless you were in southwestern ontario (laughs) like it doesn't feel like it was was it canada wide i think kenny versus spenny like had some sort of international really attention a little bit when it was really big but i do think it was a very canadian thing because i feel like trailer park boys was kind of like a very big in canada of course but also like big in the states and other places too and i feel like kenny and spenny kind of had a little bit of that to a lesser degree but no one remembers who the fuck they are now yeah they had a lot of or they have a lot of kenny versus spenny energy especially with the antics and shit like that which was like, I, I didn't know for the first bit of this movie if it was supposed to be a real thing or a staged thing or... But it's completely taken seriously. Like, Barry completely believes what he is What he's saying. talking about. I, I think that my critique of the film, my few critiques of the film, is that it was almost very niche, like, to some oh, people yes, who actually like the Parapod. 100%. Because I thought there'd be more of, like, a preamble into, like who these two guys are and and what is happening you need to know who they are before yeah it had no preamble it was just like here's the thing we're going i feel like that was a little weak point of the film and like it's extremely dry it's an extremely dry film and i I appreciate that but i could tell like you and cassie looking at the film like you were like you had like a like a like a grimace baffle on your face and like a baffled grimace look on your face when you're trying to like just figure out like what the fuck is going on? <laughs> yeah, so I I think the middle portion of the film was a little bit dry. It had a very good opening, in my opinion. And the ending was very cool. 
in the middle, I felt like it was, and I believe in the middle is where they had the clip of them fighting outside. Oh, no, that was towards the end. Was that towards the end? Yeah. And that felt very real, because it was like, well, yeah, we need material for the film. Like, you keep bringing me places, and I would get very annoyed. And again, if this is real, like, I would imagine it's real. Barry would bring them to a place to do something, and it's like... You did no research about it prior. Yeah, that was like so the whole. That was the whole do? thing with the parapod, right? Is that Barry would come with them with an idea, and then just print off like reams of Wikipedia pages, and just like re- like if not read from the page, like after the first few episodes, Ian was like, "Okay, put that away and tell me what you know about yeah, what's yeah. going on here." And Barry would say, "Like, there's a ghost in there, and, and it's a ghost <laughs> of a lady." And literally, that's what he'd say. And uh, and Ian was able to get something out of that. Bless his that's, heart. Yeah, godsend of him. But it really hit me when they were in the, the the witch's coven's crypt, and he's like, "So where's like the the head witch that we can talk to?" And she's like, "No, See, she I, she died ages ago." That was the that was like a really funny part to me because I was kind of expecting that. Like, like they were in the car, they were doing Barry's taxi, which was a part of like the parapod where like they do like two seconds where they're like okay going here and, and there's a ghost and that's all he'd say nice. so that's they, they got in the car and barry was like showing him around a few places and then they were talking about like going to that coven and ian was like well what do you know about this place and he's like well we'll just show up and it'll be fine it'll be good and then he's, he's like, like you, you didn't talk to anyone you didn't do you even you know if we're allowed to film yeah. there <laughs> yeah and he's like no i'll just i'll slip her a fiver it'll be fine <laughs> And they get there, and the fucking witch who made the place is dead. She died of witch, witch disease. She had witch disease. So uh, Ian made Barry dress up comically as, like, put a bunch of dollar store shit on his face and make him dress up as a witch in order to, like, curse him in the hole. I feel like, um... The hole. <laughs> the Ring of Stones. I feel like, uh, yeah, some of the low parts in this film that kind of, like, break your attention are, like... I think that part was funny, but there's a couple places they go to, and it's Barry's fault, where they, like... Jim. Jim's really throwing Barry Dodds under the bus. I love Barry. He sent me an email five years ago. Uh Say they used what? to do. He used to do emails about the Parapod. You'd email them and stuff. Because he did an episode on Slender Man, oh, and for the love he thought... He does not believe in that. He, he thought Slender Man was real. He thought Jim, the pictures... Jim, what, what do you even I'm say I'm telling you, bro. That? He thought the pictures of Slender Man... You know the pictures of him, like, in yeah, like, the schoolyard and shit? Yeah, that fucking made, yeah. Yeah, the, him in the schoolyard from the Something Autumn forms, like him, like, holding a little girl's hand. He thought those were real, and... What? Ian had to tell him, like, they're not real, blah, blah, blah. And I said, like, hey, guys, like, I have, I've found some videos about Slender Man. They explain, like, where it came from, all that stuff. I sent it over, and Barry was like... Thanks. We'll look. Appreciate your support. Love, Baz. I think that's what he said. I still have the email. And he uh, said, don't send me such such scary pictures. I will not be able to sleep at night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. I, like, I don't want to throw him under the bus, but it, he's definitely, like, a personable, like, cool dude. And, like, part of the reason why I love the Parapod so much is because he is a very funny man. Like, he's a, yeah. he's a funny dude. But he, he needs to prepare for his podcast and movie, I think. I feel like the movie would have been picked up a little bit if he was able to, like... I don't know, not bring him something like, because I feel like if I had to guess the way Barry picked these places were like, he would write up something on Wikipedia, thought it was cool. It was like on the way and he was like, okay, we're going to go there. And that was it. Yeah. He didn't like do a lot more prep than that. So I feel like that was a detriment to the film. But there were some things that got out of random places. Like I really liked the conversation they had at the church. I thought that was really funny. What did you think of that? That was when they were... Oh, yes. When Barry was discovering that he should be religious now because he saw the Watcher. And that points to the existence of an afterlife. <laughs> that, correct? Yes. Um, I found it exceedingly interesting because you could tell his personality quite a lot if he was instantly going to jump towards needing to become not just religious, but just Christian? any type of, re- yeah, any type, anything. He was like, it doesn't matter if this is the right one, as long as you're doing something. And it was like, wait a well, sec, he, what do you mean? He literally said, like, in there, he said he crosses himself before he goes on stage <laughs> yeah, and stand up <laughs> for luck. And it was like, why, why do you do that? Why do you do that? He's like, well, that's what they do. It's like, no, no one does this. Do you even know what church we're in? He's just like a generic one. 
like, and he's no, like, no, we're it's in a Protestant, Protestant church. <laughs> I like Jim really liked when they talked about the elephant one. He talked about all the different religions and he said the bo- the bo- <laughs> he said Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, the elephant one, the elephant one and all the Indian parapod, Fuck. all the Indian parapod uh, fans sighed. You should listen to the parapod cuz he said something I worse want to. than that. It was it yeah. was very funny. I ha- like I think Ian Boldsworth has a okay. So Ian Boldsworth made a made a podcast called The Mental Podcast. About okay. mental health. Why does it but, seem like they've made dozens of podcasts? Ian has. He's made a lot. And it, it was like a five episode, like little mini podcast about his mental health specifically. We talked to some friends and uh, a pretty famous guy. I forget his name now, but he's like a big like actor and, and rugby player, I think, yeah. um, about like the mental health issues. But he just pulled it. Like, he, you can't get it anymore. I have two episodes that I have on my phone from, like, a long time ago. And yeah. I, I think he justified it in a way that I was like, yeah, I agree with that. You don't have to keep that up if you don't want to. Because he he made it to, like, support people going through stuff. But he felt like it wasn't supporting people. It was, like, maybe enabling some things or maybe, like, uh, doing something that wasn't his intention. So I kind of yeah. get him pulling it. So after that, I've just been, like, saving. Like, on my hard drive, I have literally, like, all the Parapod all the Peacock and Gamble podcasts, like all that shit saves. So if I ever want to listen to it again in like five, six, seven, ten, twenty years, I can that I have it. Interesting, yeah. But uh yeah, and he um on Patreon, I support Ian Boldsworth on Patreon. Do you support them Ian Bolds Ian Boldsworth, not Barry Dodds? Not Barry Dodds. Barry Dodds, send out an F for Barry Dodds. Big F in the chat for Barry Dodds. I should I should support him too, because he makes stuff. But Ian Ian Boldsworth posted every day for years he just broke it recently because he got really sick so he had to miss like a week or something and he's a little bit sporadic the last few weeks but that's okay he posted something every day whether it was like creative writing or an art drawing like a drawing he was doing or a, yeah. or a podcast or or whatever like he's done like dodds incarcerated where he pretends barry's in jail and they just shoot oh the yes shit. You, you briefly mentioned that yeah he talks. He, there's a podcast called Ideas Man where Ian plays like uh, he's like he's like a TV producer, and Barry has to come with him with an idea of something to sell and uh, what the movies missed. Or he talks, he gets his friend, and they talk about like what could have happened behind the scenes in like Star Wars or, or Star Trek and shit like that. Like very like awesome content consumed like daily. Like you're on your way to work or you have your lunch break, and you're like, oh fuck, let me see what Ian's up to today, and you just read it. He's a very involved like very impressive guy like it feels like he does a ton of shit all the stuff that you've said it feels like he's in a million different podcasts and a ton of different comedy stuff i really want to like live up to that work ethic and not even that work ethic just like i feel like a lot of my comedy and a lot of like the way i've dealt with like my own mental health issues and like and like my personality and stuff was really like he was a big guy like him and like a few other guys online, like I'm really like look up to is like a respectable like dude who just treats people with respect and is like really funny and witty. It's yeah, really cool. yeah. I look up to all the members of Sleepy Cast, as Psychic that. Pebbles, and uh, not Shadman. Not Shadman. That's Shad good. Man. I'm glad you don't look up to Shadman. But uh, how do you feel about like the the ending of this film? I think we've talked about the beginning and the middle, but the ending of this film, where like. It's like Barry locked or Ian locked Barry in Pontefract. Oh yes, in Pontefract, and, and then yeah. So I don't know. Like obviously it, w- it was staged, and Ian says he wasn't scared at all, but it, he kind of looked worried. Like he looked unnerved and stuff. Oh, in the I, in the in the house that Barry yeah, said, I'm yeah. not going to tell you where we're going. We'll lock you in the room, whatever. I feel like you could make the argument that Ian gravitated towards the fireplace, and the fireplace was like the main focal point of like the haunting or the stories and stuff but i don't yeah i think it was more so because the it's a big goddamn empty room and the fireplace, the fireplace is the only it. notable yeah. thing i see I, I i could see that like i enjoyed the movie a lot and there are definitely really really funny and good parts to it but i feel like the best part of the like last few bits of the film was that mug falling and like yes Barry the mysterious Ian. mug when when barry opened the door or Ian you, opened the door and it fell because you couldn't have staged that because barry no, was literally no. the one who brought them there and then he opened the door and was talking to ian and then the mug fell like beside him and he was the one who was so taken aback and ian was too and he was like okay we're not stopping filming and they didn't cut and he was just like, okay come up the stairs with me and we're gonna go check this out and do whatever and the, ghost, the ghost did that it was a ghost i bet barry would say it was the ghost but that's the kind of like that's the thing right is that like 
Barry's like, he reacts and he's like, oh God. And he gets scared and he thinks it's a, he thinks it's a ghost or he thinks it's whatever. And then Ian's like, okay, let's, let's, let's get the cameras together. We're not going to cut. We're going to go check it out. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's a very cool approach to like this whole ghost thing. Cause Ian has always said at the first episode of the Parapod, before he knew what he was getting himself into with Barry and the kind of the ridiculous things he does, he said, like, I'm open minded. Like, if you convince me that ghosts are real, like, I'm totally okay with that. Like, that's great. But he just, Barry never has. I mean, uh, how do you? <laughs> it's very hard. He bought that, the, the Boo Bear, I believe it was called. And I looked it up after <laughs> as we were watching. It's like a $500 Canadian piece of shit. It's just like a little bear with lights in it. Let me, in, let me in, let me let me see you on a secret. Meters. Let me get you on a secret. All those ghost things are pieces of shit. Jim, don't say that. My my Ghostbusters Slimer Edition EKG meter has to be real. Well, a lot of them, like the the extras for the first season of the Parapod, was like Barry would bring like a piece of like ghost hunting equipment, and I remember one of them was literally a fucking radio that like went through radio stations. Oh yeah. They have that in ghost adventures. Yeah. They have that in ghost adventures. I don't remember what it's called, but I don't know what it's called either. Spirit box or something. Spirit box. Yeah. I think that's what it was. But Barry was like, yeah, you, you talk into this (laughs) and you ask the ghost questions and you can hear stuff. And I was literally like, but you're picking up radio stations. That's what Ian said too. But Barry was like, no, you put it in a bag. So it can't pick up radio stations. (laughs) You put it in the gun, a radio proof bag. But then what are you what are you what are you picking up <laughs> like what the like ghosts, what are you jim, trying to do with it jim what are you not picking up you're pi- you're picking up the ghosts obviously idiot keep with the fucking picture moron you're picking up the ghosts talking pick it up the ghosts. what do you think about like the film as like a whole as like a whole piece of thing it's like take me in mind it's like an indie film it was made with not a lot of money the guy who owned the house in pontefract yeah uh, I think we saw him for a second. His name was Bill. He was like the hippie. Yeah, we guy. saw him. Yeah, we saw him. And he was like, I used to be a non-believer. This house does things. And then it had his wife and daughter screaming at the staircase because they didn't want to go up. Um, he is a movie producer. He produced Moon. Oh, really? That, that movie Moon. Do you ever Moon. see that? I don't think so. It was a big movie with Chris Rockwell. Rock- really? Yeah, it was. it's a really, really good film. And he bought that house. Oh, no. Yeah, I've seen Moon. Yeah, That's about it, the one where the dude finds he has clones on the moon, right? Yeah. Spoilers. Oh. He, like, bought the house so he could film in it. And he rented it out to, like, a ghost program so they could do, like, a spooky thing in there. And he's just been, like, like 100% into the Parapod. Like, he produced the film. He's helping out with money oh, and stuff. Wow. And, like, it's just really cool. Um, yeah, what was your thoughts of the film as a cohesive thing? Like, as an indie film or whatever. I think it is very interesting. I think it has almost no audience besides people that already know the Parapod. Yeah. Which is a benefit and a deficit in some mm-hmm. degrees. I think it's probably more so a deficit to your movie. Like, it, it would have it would have been nice to have just a little blurb about who they both are and what the Parapod yeah, is. Yeah, I, I feel like... It, I know this movie was made for me. Like I know it was made. It's for, made for uh, fans, hundred yeah. percent. I can respect that. But I, I do wish that there was like a little bit at the beginning of like a preamble or like a introduction or like, like shoots like shots of like Ian like at his radio show and yeah, you know, like, yeah. I'm Ian Boltsworth and I'm doing this on Food Bar Radio and then Barry Dodds doing stand up like. I'm Barry Dodds. I'm a comedian. Blah, blah blah. And then saying like we made this podcast, like a little like two minute thing that to get just, just saying who they are because I was completely lost at who they were. I, like I yeah. knew they did the podcast, but I didn't know if they were friends for fifty years or they only did the podcast together or what their background was. If they only did podcasting or comedian stuff or anything like that, would have been interesting. I feel like that's a detriment to like, cause I really wanted to show you this. Cause I thought I, I didn't know anything about the, like I knew about the movie. I hadn't seen it. Yeah. I was like, there must be like a little bit of a preamble into there. And there wasn't, which is kind nothing of at all. They just jumped right into it. I liked the film. It made me laugh. It made me like a little bit terrified. It made Jim I, chortle. It did chortle heartily. And, um, I feel like there were parts that were pretty scary. Like the part where Barry's like fucking terrified in that crypt. And he's like, wow, like screaming and, and all that shit. <laughs> that was, that was pretty scary. And the part where like, the the mug lands and how it's very impromptu i like the impromptu parts of this movie like the mug landing and ian saying okay we're not cut we're not cutting we're going up and then the part where they have a fight like a real fucking fight and he's like yeah come film this and they do that i think that was a really strong part of this film Hmm. but uh yeah um if i was to say to the people to our podcast listeners the people listening to shack out back all six of you uh would i recommend this movie to you 
Uh, n- no. What I would recommend is you listen to the first season of the Parapod, which is amazing, and then this film will be made much the more better because of it. What do yeah, you think, Yeah, I can Dan? see that. Yeah, I wouldn't say go into this movie. It's definitely not the movie you watch just because it's like a paranormal Cold clock. movie. Yeah. Yeah. You watch because you're already a big fan of the Parapod, or you at least know them either individually or both because of the show but yeah you can't really go into it just being like it's a paranormal thing i like ghosts talking about that do you think barry dodds knows what ghost hunters is do you think he's a big zach baggins fan mm, i think they've talked about i a guarantee bit. it there is a show they talked about in the parapod called most haunted or something and it's like the british equivalent of ghost hunters and he said like blow hunters because I remember this story from the Parapod where there's this dude who's like pretty big. He's pretty well known. I don't remember his name, but he was like pretending to be like a spirit guide and like talking to people and shit. And Barry literally didn't believe him, think, thought he was fake. And Barry went to like one of his performances and started heckling him and like – he wasn't heckling him, but he, it was like one of those ones they did a Q&A. And yeah. they gave Barry the mic and he's literally like, well, there's this evidence and this evidence and this evidence that this is not true and like you were faking stuff. Like, what do you think about that? And the guy like turned the crowd on him and it made a really what funny the story. Fuck? Yeah, it was pretty fucked up, but it's a funny story. But I feel like this film wasn't really an exploration of ghosts and it didn't really focus on the people who – like the people he were talking to, like the – mediums or like the two women shrieking on the stairs and pontefract and stuff they were like examples but it was more like an like an investigation into barry like it was more the film was about oh, yeah it felt barry, more, more yeah, than about a, ghosts it's a, good, it's a good way to put it because no yeah. that is that is what it was yeah 100 percent. it's about hmm. it was about belief and like blind belief and stuff like that and how like barry dodds the movie yeah basically and it was about ian too but i think it was more about like the buffoonery that came about because of barry dodds really and that's what the parapod is about too ian's like there is the straight man it's more about like how the fuck could like a man who's like 40 believe this (laughs) like how could you like live your whole life and like go ahead and like just blind faith and things yeah i don't know some people some people have that ability like Uh, i don't think i'm insanely superstitious by any means but i'm also not as hard leaning as uh ian Mm. is especially about some cryptidy type things like bigfoot and other items like that i feel like there was one episode of the parapod i don't remember what you were saying it you were saying there there was one where barry was putting out actual evidence well evidence here's the thing good points is that ian like barry was talking about something and ian was kind of like on a tirade about like because barry did bring some bullshit and then Barry brought about something. I don't remember what it was. This is making a bad podcast. But Ian, like Barry brought about something. But the fact is that Ian was dismissive of it because Barry didn't have confidence in what he was saying. Like he didn't research. So I thought like that was a really good point. But Barry didn't know anything about it. He literally just brought it up and didn't support it. And I'm like, yeah. fuck, if you just like did that little bit more of like picking our way at it instead of just th- looking through Wikipedia and getting your things like that, like you would have got him on a little point. But yeah. Anyway, that was uh, episode 29, the Parapod. It was very mas- Jim masturbatory. This, this episode is about Jim jerking his dick, talking about the Parapod and Ian Boldsworth. So, yeah, I hope you all <laughs> could indulge me in that you listen, tonight. We, you listen to a podcast about us talking about a podcast movie. <laughs> How niche is that? I'm sure we'll Literally. get a lot of listens on this episode, Dan. Don't worry, uh, I'll, ta- I'll tag it, get all the YouTube hypes. I'll, I'll do it. Hashtag gaming, hashtag, hashtag giveaway, all that good stuff. All that good shit. But uh, we're winding down. I'm, I'm getting Radicus in my lap. I'm putting my sleepy pajamas on. I'm uh, drinking my warm glass of milk. I'm eating my tin of sardines. Oh, so delicious, wh- delicious. What are we doing for episode 30 or 31 of Shack Out Back, Dan? I'm pretty sure it's 30. I'm pretty sure this is 29. But we are doing, I mentioned it during the movie because Red Letter Media just did a video on it. We are going to watch Enemy Mine. What the fuck is Enemy Mine? Enemy Mine is a movie from the 90s, question mark, I think. It's either the 90s or the 80s. Yeah, Enemy Mine is from 1985, and it's about a two species that are at war, and two members crash onto a shit, crash onto a planet, and they have to learn to live with each other, and the alien's asexual, and he has a little baby, and I don't know why, but I watched a lot of this. I watched this movie a lot as a kid, and God help me, I have no clue why. Dennis Quaid. Well, you said yeah. like your dad had a DVD. My dad of it had it on really DVD or it. something, or like VHS, and I watched it a lot. I'm excited. That looks like I haven't watched like a weird like independent film from the 80s in a long ass time. Not I really like independent, but small ass film. 
Uh, this is a shorter one. Did you want to ring us out in anything exciting, Dan? Any uh, anything you want to talk about? Dan gave me a bunch of shit for GPU sag, and I didn't know GPU <laughs> sag was a thing. Is GPU sag a thing that keeps you up at night? No, it used to until I found those things. It's not a huge thing. Some people don't care about it at all, but over time, your GPU is really heavy, right? And it's lit. It's laying against the board like that, so it can like cause the board to either warp or like the gpu can bend all down and sometimes it can damage the motherboard but all you need is a little piece of metal or plastic to hold it up so you're saying that my computer is going to turn into like a 96 year old man eventually it's going to develop a a a a hump liver uh, spots yeah Uh, a a buffalo hump if you will buffalo hump if you may if you will yes oh i think we're going to take us out on buffalo hump dan so i I, uh, a buffalo hump day to you and a buffalo hump day in the future my friend a buffalo hump to all and to all a good night good night darling goodbye jim bye-bye good night dan good night everybody It's late one night, rainy, dark, right. probably in roadworks, known this country. Lorry. <laughs> Straight in the back of us. Right. Yeah. And that kills you? Yeah, lose control through the crash barriers, cough flips, ball of flames. What? How That's... are you going to fake that? Oh, I'm... sorry. I thought you were asking us how I would die. <laughs> I think I'm going to die. No, I asked you ages ago. <laughs> how would you fake your death? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? <laughs>